Hi guys, in today's video we will be talking a little bit about metabolism, catabolism, and anabolism, as well as how glucose and glycogen play a role. First of all, what is metabolism? I like to think of metabolism as the sum of every single reaction that occurs in my body. For example, bringing oxygen from my lungs into vessels and then taking them to my tissues. Or for example, secreting waste, whether that is through sweat or through urine, turning my body's sugar into energy. Everything is a chemical reaction. And the total of all these chemical reactions makes up your metabolism. Metabolism can then be broken down into two subdivisions. We have catabolism as well as anabolism. Whenever a chemical reaction occurs, bonds are being broken or added to change one thing into another substance or structure that's a little bit different. So if I have a structure and I break it apart, that is an example of catabolism. However, if I take two separate units and I join them together, this is an example of anabolism. So again, catabolism is breaking apart or separating, while anabolism is putting two things, two units together or joining, synthesizing. In this example here, I'm taking a polymer and then breaking or separating or splitting it into individual monomers. On the other hand, anabolism would involve taking these individual units and joining them together to produce one long unit or a polymer. These can be a little bit tricky to remember, but I always think of cats, you know, breaking things. I'm not really a cat person. I just think of cats like scratching a couch or a sofa. I don't really know what cats do, but I just think that they break things. And then for anabolism, I always think of anabolic steroids, which you take when you want to build muscle. So building anabolic steroids, anabolism. Though recently my coworker Ricky told me one that is way better than that. She said, catabolism, you can think of cutting. When you think of cutting, you can think of splitting it into its own individual monomers. As for anabolism, A is like adding. And when you're adding, you're bringing them together to synthesize or to produce a new substance. So anabolism, adding, building, catabolism, breaking or cutting. Now that we know that there's anabolism and catabolism, it's easier to understand metabolism. Metabolism is simply the sum of all of our chemical reactions, whether they are catabolic reactions or anabolic reactions. So if we take all of our body's ability to break things, and we add it up to all of our body's abilities to build things, we end up with our body's metabolism, which is simply the sum of catabolism and anabolism. So you add these two together, you get your metabolism. I mentioned earlier we were going to talk a little bit about glucose and glycogen. You may recall that glycogen is simply the storage form of glucose. And I think I used this analogy in a previous video, but if someone were to give me 50 muffins, like I love muffins, muffins, that's good stuff, but I can't deal with 50 muffins all at once. So what I have to do is I have to put it into a box and I have to store it. I'll store it in my freezer. So I'll keep some muffins to eat, obviously, because I like muffins, but the remainder, I will save it in the freezer for another day when that muffin craving hits. Very, very similarly, I will have glucose, and if I all of a sudden get too much glucose, I can store it. I'll store it in my liver, in my muscles, in the form of glycogen. Glycogen I can then use on a later day, break it down into glucose again, and it's good as new. I can then use that glucose for further energy. Let's write it out to make it a little more clear. First of all, let's look at the breakdown of glucose. When we break down glucose, we're taking that very, very simple sugar and we're turning it into pyruvate and then we can undergo cellular respiration to get what we want, which is energy. The process of breaking down glucose or the catabolic reaction for glucose is known as glycolysis. Glycolysis. 
So you want to be extremely careful here because even though we are talking about glucose, glycolysis has a Y similar to glycogen. So tread very carefully here. On the other hand, when we are building glucose, we are synthesizing glucose, this process is known as gluconeogenesis. The word gluconeogenesis literally means sugar, gluco, neo means new, and genesis means production or formation. So essentially what this is saying, gluconeogenesis, is formation or forming a new sugar. And what do we form these new sugars out of? Well, to form a glucose molecule, we can make it out of fat or we can make it out of protein. As you probably remember from my digestion and metabolism video, we can break down proteins and fats for energy. But in order to go from protein to energy, we have to convert it through an intermediate, which is glucose. In order to go from the fat into ATP, exactly like protein, we first need to turn it to glucose. Having said that, we can turn proteins and lipids into glucose through this process, gluconeogenesis, forming a new sugar from another source. In terms of glycogen, we can break down glycogen to give us the sugar that we want. That would be relating to my previous analogy, taking the muffins out of the freezer and defrosting them so I can get ready to eat the muffins. If I want to break down glycogen, this process is called glycogenolysis. In glycogenolysis, or you may also hear it as glycogenolysis, is essentially the process of breaking down the stored form of glucose back into its original form. So turning glycogen back into glucose. Finally, we have glycogen anabolism, or the synthesis, the production of glycogen. And this is known as glycogenesis. And glycogenesis simply means formation of glycogen. One thing that I'd like to point out here, which is very important, is that notice that whenever we are synthesizing something, whenever we're generating something, our word is genesis. Genesis means formation. So whenever we have an anabolic reaction, the word always ends with genesis. Genesis meaning production, synthesis, or formation. On the other hand, the suffix lysis refers to splitting. Splitting, breaking, cleaving, all the same thing. So lysis, whenever you see the term lysis, you know that the reaction is some kind of breakdown reaction. You know that it's either going to be breaking glucose or breaking glycogen, and that would be a catabolic reaction. So to do a quick summary, glycolysis is breaking glucose into ATP, Gluconeogenesis is turning fats and proteins into glucose. Glycogenolysis, or glycogenolysis, is breaking down glycogen back into glucose. And glycogenesis is the formation of glycogen, which is done only when you have excessive glucose, such as after a large meal or eating a dessert. Again, keep in mind that whenever you see lysis, it's always breakdown either the breakdown of glucose or the breakdown of glycogen. On the other hand, whenever you see the suffix genesis, you know that it has to do with synthesis, production, or formation, whether that's forming a molecule of glucose or whether that's forming glycogen. So these suffixes can really tell you a lot. And again, be very wary about this one, glycolysis with a Y. This one is gluco and glucose, that makes sense glyco, glyco, and glyco, so that makes sense. So it's only this one to be very aware of. And that's pretty much it. I hope this metabolism video helped to clarify a few things. Thanks for watching.